basic 101 bridal veil for those of you who all of a sudden have realized, gee, I need to do a bridal veil and they're kind of expensive. It's a typical millinery needle. They're easier to thread, the holes aren't too small, and they're slender and you can get them fairly long. I, that's probably about a number seven or so. Meanwhile, uh, they do come assorted, but meanwhile, I like a long thread because I'm gonna be using a lot of this for basting and tying up the, um, the gathers onto the comb. So there's our thread. And what you wanna do is you wanna take this thread and we're gonna tie it in a knot and leave tails because you're gonna use those tails for tying off a few times. So maybe leave a few inches, okay? There you go. And then I'm using just a basic off-white thread because it's gonna blend with my project. I'm gonna do a blushy ivory veil this morning. And then um, the veiling comes in all sorts of shades and it's very forgiving because veiling is very sheer and it blends with a lot of these different colors. But some of them, we have so many shades, we won't go into all that, but we can virtually match anything. This is Bridal Illusion, it's 72 inches wide. That's gonna be for like your basic veil that's not skimpy looking up to maybe knee length or could be going to the floor, but then it starts to get skimpy if it's too narrow. So I uh, will take the veiling and I will cut. We're gonna do like a fingertip. That's the most popular length. That's around 42 to 45 inches long, depending on where it starts on your head. So. And then of course, if you want to have a blusher, you can do that in one full circle and just fold it off center. If you are going to have just one layer, if you have a two yard long piece of veiling, that will do a fingertip and a blusher. Usually fingertip would be like 45 inches down here and the blusher is gonna be more or less waist length, but when it pulls forward about bust high, more or less, 27 inches is about my favorite length. You could do 24, but I wouldn't go any shorter than that. So let me just cut that. Your basics for what you're gonna need to do a veil. Either a really good scissors, not the ones from your husband's garage, but one that cuts, because this is fine fabric. A cutting wheel is wonderful, but a cutting wheel and a, and a cutting board are an expensive investment. If you're just doing one veil, I'm gonna assume you're just gonna have a scissors and hopefully a good one. And then we need a tape measure, a yardstick, which will be really handy for pivoting your circle. Thread, of course, needles, pins. Sometimes for certain things, clips are really handy. An iron. And then these are various types of, va of combs that we have got. This one is just cut down from that, but usually this is like a two to two and a half inch up to four inches, four and a half. And so the deal is with combs is your hair, if it's really fine, you want a grip tooth comb or you could go with a metal comb. You can actually pin through that. Sometimes the hairdressers like that because you could actually put a bobby pin through the comb. But if you do a little swirl sometimes and go in, that grips it pretty good. If your hair is gonna be really thick or some kind of a complicated updo, you might prefer a straight tooth comb because if you're taking it out after the wedding for the reception, maybe you're dancing and you don't want it in your way, the straight tooth will slide in and out easier from either thick curly hair or a or complicated updo so it doesn't snag and it doesn't really mess up your hair when you pull it out. A lot of times we put the veil on a comb and then an adornment like uh, rhinestones or flowers or something else on a separate comb or clip so that you can place it anywhere. So often the comb is put underneath the hair and where the veil starts, you don't even really see where it starts. But we're gonna assume that you can see it today, whether you decorate the top of it or not, it's up to you, it's, it's, there's plenty of choices. So anyway, or, yeah, I'll cut the veiling. Now, Illusion is what I prefer to use. Illusion veiling, uh, tool is a generic term for veiling, but or 
the general structure is tulle, but illusion is specifically for bridal veils and sometimes used for overlays like dresses and such. And then uh, it's a fine diamond or, well, I guess that's TMI. It's a fine, fine uh, texture. So you can kind of see like that. It has a little bit of crispness to it, but it's not like stiff, like underneath a petticoat. So Illusion's pretty much available anywhere, but you can get better qualities. We carry American made Illusion, and it's always nice to support American. Anyway, we're gonna go with two yards of this. After I cut this, I'm going to make sure that it's flawless. Most often it is, but once in a while, we might find a, a snag or something in it. If we can work around it, great. If you don't, well, we're going to start with another piece. It's two yards at two yards wide. And so it is the most common width for bridal veils. And, uh, if you go longer, like a floor length veil or waltz length, which is kind of like mid train, I like to go to a three yard wide veil. That's 108 inches or 72 for this and 108 for the long veil. So what we're gonna do is we're opening it up, unfolding it once to cut it. So you see the folds are gonna go lengthwise. So when you press this with a cool iron, nylon setting, you want to get these wrinkles out that are folded on the bolt, but because it's vertical, it really won't show a lot because it's going to be hanging vertically versus going horizontally. So okay. you want to make sure that your folds always go vertical. So let's, let me back up the veiling, so how the veiling comes off the bolt. The veiling comes off the bolt folded four layers. You have double folds here and a single there. You're going to open it once so we have just a single layer, single fold. Two layers with a single fold. And then I'm cutting one big circle in this case for two layers. I have two layers, single fold. I'm going to fold them back on each other. So basically, I've got a big square. Now, because this is two yards wide and I have two yards of length, it's going to be a pretty perfect circle when I cut it. If you have a longer or shorter veil, the difference will be made up here on the fold. But where we cut it, it won't really make much difference how long it is. So, I'm putting this on black. I'm not going to cut it on the black, but I want you to be able to see it. Let's flatten that out. Now. When I cut a veil, I, first you want to do pins so that the folds are not going to be kinky. So when you cut it, it's nice and flat. So I will pull it, I will cut it like that. By the way, long slender pins are the greatest thing on veiling. So I'm using kind of hodgepodge at the moment, but it's whatever you have, but tiny pins are just a lot more work where you need more of them. Let me grab a few more over here. So I'm sort of flattening it out as I pin it. And then I'm going to make sure everything's even. So you know you have this folded right when you have four, four corners together. If you have a fold here, you don't want to cut anything until you get that straightened out. That is wrong. Okay, so... I'm going to pin that together and I'm just going to keep working out all the wrinkles and whatever. If it's really highly wrinkled, you might want to press it before you cut it, just so it doesn't give you fits. This has got just a few wrinkles, but some of this is going to get trimmed off anyway, so we're not going to worry about it. We just want to flatten it out as much as possible so we have an even cut. That's kind of the important thing. So I'm going to pin it along the 
this edge in quite a few places. Pull these out. Come on, baby. Where are you? There you are. Okay. And flatten out. Tell you done maybe 10 or 20 of them. <laughs> anyway, so I'm gonna put a pin there just to keep them from moving. This is going to be the center bottom of both layers right there because that's your fold. So that's center. Now to cut the round, we're gonna fold this like that. Now we've done a pivot. So you see, that's why my pin is going that direction. I'm just going to keep those layers together. Now I'm going to ease these, that one out and I'll put that there to keep this from moving. I'm going to take this one out and I'm going to move it on the top. I'm not going to cut it on this fabric. I don't want to cut my fabric, but I just do want you to see what I'm doing. Come here, baby. Here we go. Now we're flattening those folds out again. I mean, you could give this a little press. I like to use this part, though, that's going to be scrap for testing my iron on because every iron's different until you get used to doing this. Nylon setting, if you start cooler, you can always bump your heat up, but you don't want to go too hot too fast or you're going to have you're going to fry your veil and you're going to have a melted spot. That's not good. Anyway, and we're going to take that pin. We're going to move it up. Now you see I've got all different lengths of layers in here, but we're going to be cutting on the inside. So pretty much trimming that. This is the important point. We're going to pivot from that and we're going to go right up in here and it's going to be totally perpendicular on this fold. That's really important, otherwise you're going to have a scallop or a point when you open it up. We're going to actually pull that in and bring this up because this is your center back and this is your length. You don't want to cut your length off. So this point is, I'm going to have to repin these and smooth them out. This just happens. It's just the way it is. No matter how many times you do this, you have to go through this and smooth this out. And when you cut here, it's got to be totally perpendicular. Otherwise, you'll have a point or a scallop. Unless you want to make a scallop, well, I guess you could. That's a whole nother thing, and it's a little complicated to make a scallop veil, but you, you can do it. You may need something like a dinner plate or something to guide you, make your scallops even. That, that could be tricky. It takes quite a while of adjusting to make sure it's all even if you do some, something other than round. It's real pretty, though. All right, so we're almost there. We got our our bottom. We're going to cut like this right there. And I'm going to put some more pins on the inside. That's going to end up on the outside. But I'm just trying to keep things from moving on me because this does like to scoot. So I'm going to put some more pins up here. I always put my pins in the same direction. And then you can go like this, sweep them all out. So 
So this is your pivot point up here. So this should be roughly 36 inches from there to there. And all the way along here, it's going to be 36 inches. So here's your yardstick. No bailing sometimes is a little odd. This is like 35. But we're going to use, this is your pivot point. And then this is going to come around here. And from this point, it's going to be the same length. That'll give you a perfect circle. So you can see that where the end of the yardstick is, that's our cut mark. So we want to bring our pins into the inside of that cut mark. Okay, like that. And here we are again. Get another pin. Inside the cut mark, it keeps things from those layers together while you're cutting it so you have a nice smooth non-jagged edge. And then I can even bring that one up because this is the important place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to cut I'm going to pin right right like a quarter of an inch inside for my cut. So you have a little bit of leeway there. Uh -huh. Pinning through those folds so they don't move. Otherwise, I might get a little jagged edge. It's not so bad if your jagged edges are going to be covered with lace, but if you don't want this covered with anything, it's got to be a more perfect cut. So, or if you're going to be doing very minimal trim on it. Alright, so that's there. That's there. Da -da 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 -da. This needs to be out a little bit. Well, you see, there's also flex in here. That's why you have to just sort of you pin it the best you can, and when you take it to actually do your cutting, you just make sure it's a smooth line. If it's a little bit oval or something, nobody's going to care or notice because it's so sheer anyway. Now I know you can't see it here because this table's ivory. My bailing is like blush. Now, if I had a cutting board, I could just take the wheel and go, whoosh. it's wonderful. But I'm going to assume not too many people have cutting boards. So when you start to cut this, we're going to go in perpendicular, and I'm just going to start at that fold. Now, so this is one smooth cut, and you just keep your scissors. in there. If you do get a little jagged edge somewhere when you're done, you can go back and just clean it up a little bit. If you're putting lace on there, nobody's going to know. Now, we'll take it over here and we can see if we need to clean up anything. Usually if you do, it's going to be right where the folds tend to be, but this looks really neat and clean right here. So that's going to do quite nice. I'm just going to clean up this up here, which is actually up toward the shoulders. But I may even take an iron and tap that with an iron and then clean it up so it doesn't keep squirreling on me because this is very typical of a veil. The veiling is often a little bit wrinkled on the edges like the selvage from the store. But you see by having these pins in here, this is going to stay together. Now if I need to, I can cut it a wee bit narrower, but like wherever the narrowest point is. I just want to smooth it out so we don't have these little jagged edges that you see there. Sometimes that'll press out, but not always. So I will just take the scissors and I'll clean that up like so. Well, got one. Let 
and it sometimes takes a few attempts to get it perfect. That's pretty good. All right. Now we get rid of those little fuzzies. Now I'll tell you one thing, when you're cutting a veil, it's a really good idea to have a clean environment, especially after you've pressed it because pressing a veil tends to make it rather static. And static sucks up all the little lint from the room. You know, the cat, the dog hair, whatever. Okay, just, just a tip or two about pressing veils. Um, as I may have mentioned before, when you press a veil, it gets really static, so make sure it, everything's clean, your ironing board, your table, your floor, if it should end up near the floor, because static, especially in Colorado, just likes to suck up. Sometimes it's nice to have a spray bottle if you want to get rid of some of the static and just spray the ear, spray the veils, whatever. You might even take tape if you get static in there because it likes to jump all over the place. A long veil is more challenging than a short one. This, this is a lot easier to keep under control. I don't use a pressing cloth because I can't see what I'm doing. The wrinkles are and everything. You just take your edges that you just cut off. You test to iron on that. Another thing you want to do with these edges are a little tiny strip like an inch wide and we're gonna wrap the comb with that and what I do is there's a lot of ways to do combs but I've discovered after many years of doing this when you're sewing on the veiling and we'll get to that the comb is plastic and it likes to slip so I like to take that little strip and wrap it around there and I will wrap it I just tuck it in on this side wrap it over here and tuck it in on the other side. What that does is when you're sewing your veiling on, it keeps it from sliding. And it doesn't take up any room for the hair, so you can still get your hair in that little crevice there. That's meant to keep it from moving in your head or in your hair. You gotta have room for your hair. Anyway, that's part of the reason for the comb, right? So, so, all right. So, ironing your illusion, you put it on a low setting and you tap it up. If the wrinkles don't come out right away, then you just tap it up a little bit so that you know what your iron will do. You can also see if it'll take out the wrinkles that are here in the cutoff area. You're gonna have a few where it came off the bolt. And if it takes that off after holding it down for a second or two, like that, you got about the right temperature. You want to make sure your iron's not continually heating up. That's as hot as it's going to get when you do that. But this will keep you from accidentally burning or melting your veil. So that's nice and smooth. And then just keep it handy in case you need to retest your iron. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that Well, I need to get this over. I gotta. So, I'm gonna pull this. I still have it pinned. That's fine because it keeps all my, all my folds together. I can also touch it up after I open it up. But I'm...
27 though is a nice length no matter where it drops. It's fluffy, so it's going to be standing out a little bit anyway. It's not like I'd be sitting next to your face. And anywhere in this bust to waist length is acceptable. It's also a pretty length in the back, so you will know uh, 27 is right. Sort of a little more or less waist length or a little longer. Then we got fingertip, which is like 42 to 45 inches. And might vary a little bit with your height. So I'm going to measure down 27. And then put a pin there. Line up those very subtle folds. So there they are, perfectly lined up. You know everything is straight. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to baste this and you know I basted hundreds of veils so I have sort of refined my basting technique <laughs> but you do it any way you like but if you if you start right there I make a little loop and I go through my since I've tied it off I can go through Oh, 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 oh,
distance that wide. I'm going to bring it in about a half an inch from each edge because you see it's going to want to go over the edges anyway. I don't particularly like it when it's gathered too long. I think it looks at box, gives it a boxy look. I think the gathers catch that loop that I missed before. And then I'm going to go all the way over here, back through the other side. I've reinforced it, but also it's going to be less slippery that way. Back out and pull that up. I can still adjust the size if I want to. Usually around three inches is what I like to do. And I'm going to tie that off. Once and twice. Good. So I'm going to keep that in there though because I want to know where the center is. Now I'm going to go upside down. And I always attach my veils upside down. You want to make sure you know which way is up when you put your comb on because the comb has to curve towards your head. First thing I have to do is prepare my comb. I'm going to take a little strip of veiling. That's my example. I don't want to use that one. Besides, this is a slightly different shade. I'm going to cut a little tiny strip of this and wrap the comb. That strip's only going to be about an inch wide. Of course, there's not enough color to really see it. I'll fold that back a few times. Makes it easier to cut on that strip. Voila. Voila. That'll be plenty to wrap the comb. This is, can't really see it, but it's about two, two feet, 24 inches more or less. Okay, so now I will put, let me do over here so you can see better. I will lay this point in there. And I will go between the first tooth and the second tooth. There we go. And you can actually tie that. If it quits bouncing around on me, I can tie it. And then lay that down there. And I am going to go around one more time to kind of cover the little knobby on the edge. Not that it really matters that much, but. Give it a little loop.
So I have this upside down, the short layer to the table throughout the top, and this is the bottom layer, so that's on top right now. So I have the pin still marking center that is going to go in the center of the comb. Like so now if I were to gather it on or whip it on just like this, it's going to be pretty flat. However, if I'm not going to decorate it, I may want to do it like this. Looks cockeyed, I know, but I'll whip it on like that. And then when I turn it, it's only going to show gathers like so. So that way you've got even up underneath your hair, it's just going to be, you're not going to really see the comb, it just disappears. going to whip back across there more or less the same way. If you missed anything, you can catch it on the way back. And then tie it off to the ends there. You can, of course, still put decoration on the top of it. 